Thanks, Corrine. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as you just heard, I did just finish uh, briefing the president in the Oval Office to give him an update on the ongoing uh, recovery efforts that are um, happening in Hawaii. Um, and I will continue to provide him updates as we continue this response in support of the state of Hawaii. While I was in there, he had an opportunity to call Governor Green and let him know that he has approved the governor's request for 100% reimbursement for the emergency work that's being done for a period of 30 days within the first 120 days at the governor's choosing. Um, I will also be traveling with the president on Monday and uh, will uh, work with him to uh, better understand some of the impacts that are happening. And I know that the people on the ground in Hawaii, and the governor mentioned this as well on the phone, will appreciate a visit from the president. Before I give an operational update, I do just want to take a minute to portray what I saw while I was on the ground uh, there earlier this week. Uh, the perilling stories of survival, the heroic accounts of response, and the sense of community that I saw across the island. Uh, while I was in one of the shelters, I met with one young boy who was getting ready to go back to school, but had lost everything. And we worked with him to find clothes in a backpack, school supplies, to be able to be ready to go to school in his new facility. It's stories like these that let you know that this is more than just the visual impact of what we're seeing on television, more than the visual impact of the burn landscape, it's the level of devastation from this fire and the feeling of loss of, from such a culturally rich community that was really palpable everywhere that I went. And while the people of Hawaii are in mourning, and as we mourn as a nation with them, I am filled with hope as they bravely begin to take the steps that are needed to heal and recover. I also want to commend the heroic first responders, many of whom lost their residents residences while they were battling the blaze and helping to support those that were fleeing to safety. Now it's important to remember rescue teams are working closely with the state to help account for those who are still missing. Given the conditions and the need for additional resources, we will have at least 40 canine search teams on the island in addition to hundreds of search and rescue personnel with more on the way. We're working carefully to search the affected areas thoroughly and compassionately while respecting all of the cultural sensitivities. This is a really hard disaster and this is a really difficult search operation. Because of the conditions and the fire debris, the dogs have to navigate the heat, they have to uh, deal with issues with their paws walking through glass and debris, and in these conditions the dogs require frequent rest which is why we are sending in additional dogs to augment the operation. In addition to them, 30 specialists from the HHS mortuary teams are already in Maui and will soon be joined by the mortuary specialists from the Department of Defense. These experts are going to be able to help identify loved ones. Now I want to be honest with everyone. This is also going to be a very long and hard recovery. But our federal, state, and local partners are working around the clock to help all of those who have been impacted by this disaster. From the beginning of this event, my regional administrator has been on the ground and has been leaning forward to support those in need. As he always does, President Biden directed me to move quickly and push as many resources into the area so we could help people as soon as possible that were impacted. Since the news first broke, about the fire, I have been in constant communication with President Biden to provide him real-time updates of the situation, both while I was on the ground and to inform him and his team of the support that we are providing to the community. And I want everybody to know this, the President, FEMA, and the entire federal family will be there to support the people of Hawaii as long as we are needed. Now just a couple of operational updates for everyone. Uh, today, FEMA's Associate Administrator for Response and Recovery, Ann Bink, and Region 9 Regional Administrator, Bob Fenton, are both on the ground. To date, we have mobilized millions of liters of water and food. We have deployed more than 700 personnel to the disaster, with more than 600 already on the island. We have given out $2.3 million in assistance to families, 
and we have approved over 1,300 registrations for assistance. We launched, launched our Transitional Sheltering Assistance Program, and this will complement the state's Fire Relief Housing Program for residents, and we also uh, authorized critical needs assistance to make sure that we're putting uh, money in the hands of survivors. We also launched a joint task force to assist the state in ensuring that the housing assistance that survivors are eligible for, whether it's through FEMA's programs or the state programs, that it will be seamless to the survivor and they don't have to figure out who they're supposed to call for help. But I also need all of your help. I need you to help us get the word out and encourage more people to apply for assistance. Please help us spread the word to residents of Maui and encourage them to register for assistance with FEMA with either our staff on the ground through our website at disasterassistance.gov or by calling 1-800-621-3362. We also opened our first... Oh, sorry. Can you please repeat the number? Yep, 1-800-621-3362 or 1-800-621-FEMA. We also opened our first disaster recovery center. Uh, what these facilities are, are they are brick and mortar locations that have federal, state, nonprofit partners that will all be co-located where people can register for assistance and help get some, and get uh, additional support. And this is an important first step in their recovery process. We're also cognizant of the fact that the fires have completely upended people's lives and that this is especially true for young children of Hawaii who are unable to return to school in their affected areas, similar to the young boy that I talked to you about. As both a grandmother and a mother myself, my heart breaks thinking about the tragedy that they have gone through and their road ahead. Children's Disaster Services has already deployed two teams in partnership with the American Red Cross to provide care and a safe and a reassuring presence in our shelters. And I am certain that this will bring ease and comfort to the parents that are still coping with the gravity of the situation with such devastating loss and want to provide some sense of stability to their families. Additionally, the Red Cross, in coordination with Maui County, continues to support staff in five shelters where food, water, hygiene kits, and other essential resources are being provided to individuals. We are also coordinating these services so that anybody who leaves a shelter for a hotel or other place to stay will be eligible to receive the same level of services being offered at these shelters. Our partners at HUD are also supporting the people of Hawaii by providing a 90-day moratorium on foreclosures of Federal Housing Administration insured mortgages and home equity conversion mortgages. This is also another very important step in their recovery process. And lastly, debris removal is going to be a critical aspect of this recovery. We have mission assigned both EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers to start the process of debris collection and planning for removal. 